Hey everyone, it's Ryan Scott from ChurchSetup.com, and today I'm excited. We're going to be reviewing this bad boy. This is the Ada Imaging 4K PTZ camera. It has an amazing price point at $2,000. It's like $19.95, and uh, we don't have them there just at the recording of this, but maybe at the publishing time, we will actually have kits built on the Ada Imaging 4K camera. We're about to hook it up and look at it, but I wanted to show you kind of the... Uh, the size and the make of it. It's a pretty hefty PTZ camera compared to the 1080 models, um, but it is a great camera. It has NDI um, HX, as you can see, it has an HDMI port on the back, does not have SDI, so it's HDMI, USB, or NDI, and a lot of cameras are moving away from SDI anyway, especially in the PTZ space. Um, because you can do 4K 60 over um, a regular fiber optic HDMI cable. And so a lot of cameras are, are doing away with it. Some aren't, especially when you get up into the broadcast quality cameras, they still have SDI. This one, however, is NDI, HDMI, and USB. It's a 30X zoom. We're gonna hook it up here and we're gonna see what the image quality is like. And hopefully you'll find this video interesting. This is the Ada Imaging 4K uh, PTZ camera, and uh, you can tell the image quality is quite good. Now, I've been messing with the exposure settings, trying to get the exposure dialed in, and uh, you can tell like right here in my head, I am a little overexposed, and uh, I've I've tried um, moving in and out, and it's kind of a it's a different kind of atmosphere here in the studio. Uh, we have these these lights, as you can see right here, that are quite hot, and uh, pulling them down. Um, creates a darker a darker area um, for us to cover. What I've noticed is, especially from a church angle, a lot of churches for the price point are gonna be okay with the occasional overexposure on a highlight because it, I mean, it really doesn't look bad. It looks uh, kind of clean um, unless you really wanna dial that down. So it's it's a little bit harder to, uh, to do some things. We've got some exposure control here. And uh, if I drop down the gain to about eight, um, you can see it does take away the harsh highlight, but it's still there because of the bright lights. Um, if I move into a different area, you can see I do get better exposure. Um, and so you just kind of have to plus and minus. Is this too dark for you? Do you need to take it up um, a couple of notches? Um, this is uh, what I recommend. You know, you see all of the F uh, stops doing it as low as possible on manual. Double your frame rate. So if you're going to 60 frames per second, you'll you'll want to double that to 125. Um, and I know that's not exactly, I've got one push white balance coming in here. Um, I've got gamma set to about six. And if you turn up gamma, you can tell the image gets a little bit, um, a little bit uh, uh, faded um, as you increase kind of the, the gamma and you can take it down and get kind of dark where it's, it's pretty harsh, but I like it kind of in the middle of the road. And then the brightness I have turned all the way down. As you can see, turn that up. You again um, introduce some of that, uh, some of that faded image look. I've got sharpness turned down, and then I've got contrast set, um, you know, right around the middle uh, to get that kind of image that I have here. It's it's the look that I like: clean, kind of uh, dark darks, bright brights, and uh, then you got the saturation there. And then you've got two different things of of noise reduction. And I played around with this a little bit. I'm gonna sit really still and let you look at this and uh, see if you see the same thing I see. It's almost as if this camera, um, when, I'm, when I'm using it in this kind of a setting, it's almost as if, if you can uh, look at the, the flesh colors, um, there's a little bit of a fuzziness there, like it can't really figure out um, how to process that. And I think it's trying not to be too sharp. And so there's some kind of algorithm that, that's uh, just a little bit hesitant there and and it might not show up to you um it could even be my monitor but uh that's one of the things i notice and if i turn off noise reduction you're gonna see um the kind of graininess film grain kind of look some people will like that um i don't you turn it back on and i don't recommend the leaving it um you know all the way up you can set it to two seems to be a pretty good middle of the road but it, it reduces some of that some of that film grain you have on there and then on the video side, you can set your frame rate and output. This is a 4K camera. You can output it down to 720 if you want. But um, but that's kind of the controls that I've been working with. And I've gotten this image kind of here. I'm going to back off here. And one of the things that I was glad to see as I, as I move the camera over here 
one of the things that I was glad to see is that with the previous version of 1080 cameras that I was seeing from Ada Imaging, PTZ Optics, and just about everyone in that price bracket was with colored lights. I've talked to plenty of people about this before. With colored lights shining on a wall, you know, for example, it's what a lot of churches do um, on their on their platform to give their their background a little bit of color. Um, the old sensors ballooned. You see that in the iPhone. You would see it in the other you know, the cheaper PTZ Optics line um, of the 1080 cameras, you'd see that all over the board, uh, a ballooning where there is color uh, light shining on. But I'm thankful that um, it looks like that is not present in this 4K camera and um, it's not present in the PTZ Optics 4K camera. It's, it's doing a much better job of translating the color light compared to just the white or, or um, you know, tungsten light, whatever. That is something that I'm very happy with. But you can see the image quality here is very good for a camera of this price point. Um, it comes in just a little bit cheaper than the PTZ Optics 4K camera. Of course, the PTZ Optics does have that um, auto tracking capability. Let me see if I can get out of here and, uh, and zoom it in on something else there in the background. I'm going to try to zoom in on that. Uh, Panasonic camera up there and just give you some of the zoom capabilities as it zooms in. Now, one of the things that I have noticed as I zoom in, it's not got the fastest autofocus when you're moving the camera around. And I'm doing this with a handheld remote, so it's not near as smooth as using like a joystick controller. Um, but uh, if I zoom in on this Lumix camera, you can tell right there, you can start seeing a little bit of that um, it's like the, the lens is starting to let a lot of ambient light in. And I think that's that blue line that you see coming up there is from one of my lights here in the studio actually hitting the lens. There's no, um, there's no blocker for that. And what happens is when it, when it zooms in all the way, and that's 100% zoom, it, it struggles with focus with that light kind of taking over. But if you back it off just a little bit, it, it focuses just fine. You can tell this is kind of dark here in the studio. So if I was to bump up the exposure, give it a little bit more gain, it might introduce a little bit more noise, but you can see it, it um, introduces a little bit more light as well. And, uh, and that's fully zoomed in almost. And then we can, we can zoom back out and you can see it, it does very well. Now you can see right here in this, uh, in this purple area, as I'm showing you around our studio in a way I've never done before, you can see where it, it, has the appearance like it might try to balloon, but that is 400 times better than the the translation of colored light in previous versions. Um, so much better. It's trying to lose focus there now. Um, it's overexposed um, on the jacket because it, it's having a trouble. It's having trouble trans translating that light. If I come back over, you can see my face is overexposed as well. So I'm going to drop that gain back down and uh and see if i can drop it down into normal ranges and now it's uh it's darker in here but you can see it's it's doing much better job if i don't have it kind of overexposed um and this is what i would consider a low light studio so you tell me i mean this image looks pretty fantastic to me for the price point this camera comes in at about 1995 i think and the ptz optics version comes in at 2199 um so the ptz optics uh camera along with this is 2200 this one is right at 2000 so about 200 dollars cheaper of course with the ptz optics you get the 4k sensor plus you get the auto tracking capabilities um but you let me know kind of what you think about this. I think the image quality on this camera is absolutely fantastic. I was very surprised by it. And uh, we're going to be adding some streaming kits, 4K streaming kits and 1080 uh, streaming kits based on the ADA imaging um, cameras so that you can get um, great quality at a lower price point um, for those that are working on a budget and uh, are okay with some of the trade-offs um, of, you know, of having to dial in that exposure. Uh, but this, I mean, this is a really, really great image. I'm very surprised by it. I'm very um, happy with it. And you can tell there's a little pulsing of focus. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest autofocus. It's not the fastest autofocus, but in a church setting, um, more than likely, if it's battling with focus, you're going to switch to manual focus anyway, or you're going to lock that focus in. You're not going to leave it on full focus, um, full autofocus all the time. If you're seeing that pulsing, 
In some instances, there won't be any pulsing because you'll have a good separation between the background and the subject. And once it locks on, it keeps uh, focus pretty well. But when I turn my face, um, it does seem to to uh, struggle a little bit with uh, with pulsing in that autofocus. But I mean, for the price point, um, you really cannot beat this. I'm going to go ahead and turn the the brightness all the way down to four decibels. And you can see this is this is the uh, the contrast and stuff trying to dial this in so um it's the uh the lower dynamic range of a camera in this price point but to me that's not a deal breaker i would actually like it to be brighter and overexpose a highlight or two and have a good clean image like this i did have a chance to play with this camera um in our church and so i hooked it up and i stood on the platform and i um i used their joystick controller which was pretty easy to set up um had the had some you know issues to work through but you have issues to work through in just about all technology all in all i was very surprised by this i am going now to show you here's side by side view um, on the left is the Ada Imaging camera um, at our church in a very, very poor lighting situation. And on the right is the PTZ Optics 1080 camera. Again, I know this is not apples and oranges. This is a 4K camera next to a 1080 camera. But I just wanted you to see the difference because the 1080 camera is still a great seller. This one's just a little bit more if you wanted to step up and do the Ada Imaging one. Um, you, might, you might enjoy that one over say the PTZ optics. This is the first time I've played with Ada Imaging and they have impressed me with their price point and their product. I am liking this a lot. I would like to know your thoughts. Um, do you think it's too noisy in the background? There is noise in the dark, um, which, you know, it's it's going to be hard to, to get something that doesn't produce a little bit of noise at this price point. It's not a $30,000 broadcast camera. It's a $2,000 4K camera. And I think it does a fantastic job. It's got a 30x zoom. There's a 20x zoom version as well. And uh, and I think it's a fantastic camera. So I'd like to know your thoughts. Um, let me know if you have any other thing that you would like me to test. Or if you'd like to see something else in this test uh, besides the footage that I gave you, then let me know. And I'll do it in future testing. But I didn't want to make this like an exhaustive review. This is a price point camera and a quality camera that some churches will be comfortable with um, taking a step up to a 4k image while um, not breaking the bank. It's not going to compete with cameras that are four or five thousand dollars a piece. Um, they will obviously have a better image quality, obviously have lower noise, and obviously be able to handle the exposure settings so much better and not have overblown highlights and really dark darts. Um, but for the price point, there are some churches that that this will be a perfect fit for, and I just wanted to highlight the things that those churches should probably consider. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Ada Imaging Camera. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and whatever else um, YouTube has added. <laughs> uh, they're always changing things up, but we look forward to hearing from you. Leave us a comment, and we will see you on the next video.